The people at Lucasfilm continue to tell on themselves. The latest is Obi-Wan Kenobi director Deborah Chow, who recently shared her advice for up and coming Star Wars directors, saying that they should not get hung up on the Star Wars of it all. That's right. Up and coming Star Wars directors should not get hung up on the Star Wars of it all. What an absolutely insane comment to make. Maybe that is something that you should probably get hung up on is in fact that you are doing Star Wars. But let's get into this here. She was speaking with the Hollywood reporters, Brian Davids, who asked Chow, what advice would you offer the next director of a Star Wars project? She responded, make sure all the creatures go to the bathroom before you bring them to set. Otherwise, they're going to be waiting 45 minutes. She then proceeded to laugh. Nice little fun, light joke there. Nothing wrong with that. However, she then shared her serious answer. She said, the biggest thing I learned from the Mandalorian is not get is to not get hung up on the Star Wars of it all. It's hard on a project where there's so much canon and so much responsibility to a fan base, but I would always go, if you take the Star Wars out of this and it's just people and human emotions, does this story hold up? What an absolutely dumb thing to say. This is Star Wars. You cannot remove Star Wars from Star Wars. To remove Star Wars from Star Wars, you get what Disney has created, a bunch of absolute garbage. And clearly, even if you follow her, if you even if you do take the Star Wars out of it, it doesn't hold up because you, it is just people and emotions. And that's what she delivered in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that is what Lucasfilm has been delivering. And that's why people have been leaving, fleeing Star Wars uh, for a very long time now, since I would say the, the, the breaking point was The Last Jedi. But I do think people were leaving after The Force Awakens as well, but I think the real breaking point was The Last Jedi. We're now seeing the uh, significant repercussions to the decisions that they've made, decisions like Deborah Chow, the advice that Deborah Chow is giving to people, the dev- the advice that she has actually implemented in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. It has resulted in an entire animation and visual effects studio being shut down in Singapore. But let's get, but she wasn't done there. Not only did Chow tell future Star Wars creators to ignore the Star Wars of it all and Star Wars canon, but she justified her canon breaking decision to have Obi Wan Kenobi leave Tatooine and cross lightsabers with Darth Vader before they even, before they eventually met on the Death Star in the original Star Wars film. David's asked, asked her, did Al Guinness is, uh, true from a certain point of view line about having told Luke and Darth Vader, um, having told Luke that Darth Vader murdered his father, give you license to imagine that there was, more to most of what Obi-Wan said. She answered, I don't think anyone will ever know exactly what George Lucas intended or what the intention was with some lines. There's so much uh, room for interpretation and so many people have different interpretations. So for us, the big thing was emotional authenticity and that this felt innately like the right journey for these characters who are coming out of the prequels and into A New Hope. What an absolute garbage comment. This did not feel like the right journey, and there was absolutely zero emotional authenticity to it because it completely contradicts what we what took place in not only the original Star Wars film, but in George Lucas's prequel, specifically Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Let's get into this two year two because we got this here. Uh, she had previously admitted to the Hollywood Reporter that she knew that Obi Wan Kenobi was supposed to be sitting on Tatooine, communing with Qui Gon Jinn, and watching over Luke Skywalker. So re- remember, this is what she said. She said it felt like the right journey, but then she goes on and says here that that's not what it was supposed to be at all. She says you're between two trilogies with these huge iconic characters. Everybody knows what happened to them before and after. And you're starting with a character where the public perception is that he should be sitting on that rock for 20 years. But those 20 years between Avengers of the Sith and A New Hope had so much to explore on an emotional level. No, he's there on Tatooine. You could have told a story with him on Tatooine watching over Luke Skywalker. You, you chose not to do that. You chose to change the story that George Lucas created, you chose to create your own story. You thought you could do it better because you just don't care about Star Wars. And you specifically, this is specifically the advice that you took. You took your own advice. You said, don't get caught up on the Star Wars of it all. And you decided to just ignore Star Wars. And the reason there was a public perception for it is because that's what happened. George Lucas made it very clear through his films. In the original Star Wars film, Darth Vader tells Obi-Wan Kenobi, I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Kenobi retorted only a master of evil, Darth. So very clear there that Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader last met on Mustafar when Anakin was actually still kind of the Padawan to Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was his master. Obviously, we know that he had indeed already um, pledged allegiance to Darth Sidious and had become Darth Vader. 
but it was still Obi-Wan Kenobi was still trying to teach his Padawan a lesson and he had to teach it through at, by the, at the end of his lightsaber. Uh, whereas in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, Obi-Wan Kenobi was no longer the master at that point. So this makes absolutely no sense now because of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Then, in Revenge of the Sith, Kenobi not only volunteers to watch over Luke Skywalker, but he is tasked by Yoda to begin communing with Qui-Gon Jinn in order to master how to become one with the Force. Kenobi says, I will take the child and watch over him, referring to Luke Skywalker. And then Yoda says, until the time is right, disappear we will. Very clear. Until the time is right, disappear we will. Not when uh, Leia is getting kidnapped and you got to go find her and stuff like that. No, the time for him to come back is when Leia gives him the message and he's got to go take the, the Death Star plans to Alder, Alderaan. Uh, anyways, Yoda, uh, Yoda then tasks Kenobi, he says, in your solitude on Tatooine, solitude on Tatooine, right? Solitude on Tatooine, he stays on Tatooine. Training I have for you, an old friend has learned the path through immortality. One who has returned from the netherworld of the Force, your old master, how to commune with him, I will teach you. Very clear uh, what, what Obi-Wan is going to be doing on Tatooine, watching over Luke Skywalker, communing with Qui-Gon Jinn in order to become one with the Force. So clearly, Chow knew what she was doing, but she was clearly taking her own advice. She also admitted she did this when asked about having Kenobi track down a 10-year-old Leia Organa. She said there was a lot of discussion about it, and we didn't know how the fan base would react and if they'd say that we were breaking canon. You were. It's tricky because on some level, everything could be perceived as breaking canon. That's not true. But you have to take some swings. So she literally knows what she was doing. They knew they were breaking canon. They knew they were going to get fan backlash from it. But she was like, oh, we're going to do it anyways because we got to take some swings. Swinging at you, the fans, is what she really means. There was also nothing that said they hadn't met before. That's absolutely not true. So we did obviously take some license, but we tried to hook hook it back into a new hope to at least connect the two. No, it's very clear that 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 uh, that they that they had not met before. Because if you watch the original Star Wars trilogy, Leia's message when Obi Wan Kenobi or Ben Kenobi uh, listens to it, this is what she says: "General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I am, I am unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion in the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to retrieve it. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. That is a very very formal message. She clearly does not know who Obi-Wan Kenobi is. She's referring to him as General Kenobi. She's saying that he, you served my father in the Clone Wars. It is not like she's clearly not sending that message as someone who knows who Obi-Wan Kenobi is, who went on this grand adventure with him, uh, who, who rescued her uh, from a bunch of Sith Inquisitors and the whatever, in, Fortress Inquisitorious, etc., etc. No, she had never met Obi-Wan Kenobi, and she never did meet Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars at all, because he uh, died uh, at the hand of Darth Vader on the Death Star before Princess Leia had actually, um, was able to be actually fully rescued, and they got on to the Millennium Falcon. So, uh, the creators of Star Wars know they are breaking canon, they know they are changing the story, and they simply don't care. It's very clear that that is what Deborah Chow thinks. She knows she's doing it, she knows she's changing the story and she just doesn't care. In fact, they are encouraging potential. She's encouraging new, potential new Star Wars creators to fall in their steps. Dave Filoni has said this as well. He says people get into all of these debates of what's canon and what's not and sometimes forget just the special special nature of telling a good story and creating great characters. So who cares about Star Wars canon? Who cares about ha what happened with these characters in the past? Who cares about the history of Star Wars? As long as uh, I tell a, uh, what I think is a good story now that maybe it contradicts everything that happened in the past, it doesn't matter because I'm telling a good story even though, no, you're not. You're not telling a good story because it's disconnected from the past it's disconnected from the past it's disconnected from the history of star wars thus it cannot actually be a good story because it is completely disconnected it's no longer in the actual star wars continuity so this is what these people are doing and as i said they're paying for they're paying the price for this you've got singapore the government of Singapore has actually called them out on it. It says the global media industry is facing disruption from rapid technological advances while studios are coping with challenges relating to talent. Talking about Deborah Chow, Dave Filoni, in my opinion, and profitability. No one's watching their shows anymore. Solo lost money. They had massive declining, 
a massive decline at the box office in the Disney, Disney sequel trilogy. We haven't seen a Disney Star Wars film since the rise of Skywalker and has been relegated to a Disney Plus, uh, a bunch of Disney Plus shows with absolutely massive budgets where they are clearly not getting any return on it as the Disney Plus streaming service continues to lose hand over fist for the Walt Disney Company quarter after quarter. And it doesn't look like anything is going to be changing because these are the people that are in charge of Star Wars. Dave Filoni, Deborah Chow, they are admitting that they don't care. And they're just, they're just, they're just saying that they're taking big swings at you, the audience. Subscribe for more.